Hello, and welcome to the Bettendorf Public Library's Take Home Workshop. In today's Take Home Workshop, we're going to be doing a bracelet using Japanese kumihimo. Kumihimo is a style of Japanese braiding. We have a couple of books in the library on it. You all can also find additional patterns and techniques online, of course. This is a kumihimo disc. This is what is normally used um, to do kumihimo hima. There are slots on the edges that are numbered, and then you run your strands of cord through those slots, and then down your finished braid comes out through the hole in the bottom. And the pattern of the braid determines how you move the cords from one slot to another. They come in round and square. Today we're going to be doing a flat braid using a version, a modified home DIY version of a square kumihimo plate. So let's take a look and see what's in your kit. In your kit, you will find a four by four inch square of cardboard, and this is just a standard weight chipboard. So if yours doesn't work out, or if you want to do more, just an old cereal box or something about that weight you would also work. You're also going to find your cord, and it's wrapped up with two clear elastic bands. So hold on to these, because we're gonna be using them. We only need one, but I gave you two just in case one broke. And then we also have our cord. Now this is a rat tail cord. Um, they call it that because it kind of looks like a, a rat tail. It's satiny, it's kind of shiny, and you have three yards each of two colors. And that's what we'll need to make a bracelet like this. What you'll need is a pair of scissors or a straight blade for cutting. And then you, optionally, you can have a way to strengthen your knots and your cut ends when you're done. You can dab them with glue. I'm going to use flame. Flame doesn't always work on rat tail. Depending on your rat tail is, is made of, it might burn instead of melt. So I tested this for us. Um, and this does melt nicely, so we can use a flame, but otherwise a little dab, dab of glue will work well for that as well. So that's our supplies, let's get started. Our first step is we're going to make our kumihimo disc. Basically what we're gonna use, instead of a standard disc with all of these slots across the top, we only need four, top and bottom, and then one on the side. So I'm gonna use my scissors, and I'm going to cut four slots, fairly evenly spaced. And probably about a half inch deep. Then I'm gonna flip it over and directly across from them on the other side of the disc, I'm going to do the same. So we have four on top, four on the bottom. And then I'm gonna do one more on the side. And it'll be, as I go, it'll be on the left-hand side. So, top, bottom, and then a cut on the left. Then we're going to do a little cut in the middle. Um, depending on your scissors, this might be easy to do with scissors. For me, it's gonna be easier to do with a sharp razor. So I'm just gonna make a little rectangle in the middle. is a little too small, so I'm gonna make it a little bigger. And there you have it. There's our modified Kumi Hemo disc. And now on to getting our cords ready. So what you have here are two lengths of cord. They are three yards each. If I can find the end, yes, three yards each um, of this rat tail. Now this is a little bit more than you'll need. My original bracelet, the braided part was six inches and I had leftovers. So I gave you enough space that you'll have room for more. And in fact, this one fits pretty snugly. So I will probably do it just over six inches, just a row or two more. So in order to prep this, what we're gonna do is we're going to put the cords together Get them wrapped up in our scissors off camera there. Put our cords together, 
get them nice and straight. We're gonna cut these in half and then cut them in half again. just folded them and cut them in half. Then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna fold and cut in half again. And I'll end up with eight cords. Four of each color. Then with all my ends together, I'm going to put a knot right at the end here. Now, rat tail is shiny and it's slippery. So knots don't hold real well unless you make them really tight. So you're gonna wanna pull on each individual cord as hard as you can because you want this knot to be tight because it's going to be part of your clasp. So we're pulling on each one of these as tight as we can and we're gonna do the same on the cut ends everyone to make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, that's as tight as I can get it. So now that's not going to slide around. That's not going to come undone So it is so because it is so tight. And we're going to separate our blue from our cream. And if our hole is big enough, we're gonna poke our knot through the center hole on our disc. Mine is not wanting to go, there it goes. So we're gonna have the blue going up, the cream going down, and we're going to slide one strand through each slit in our disc. When you do this, instead of just like forcing it down, twist your, um, bend your tabs a little bit and bring it in from the side. What that will do will keep your tabs, these little tabs from bending down and it makes a more secure hold on your cord if they are twisted sideways a little bit instead of bent down. Then we're gonna do the same down at the bottom. And again, we're gonna kind of sneak it in there from the side so that our tabs are a little bit twisted to hold it. These will loosen up as you go. So we have got four off the top, four off the bottom, the knot is through the back, and one empty slit top to the side. Now to hold this, I'm holding it with my left hand and I'm pinching this knot between my fingers. You want to maintain a little bit of tension here so that your knots and your braid are even. Now, we start the braiding. One of the things I like about this craft is I think it makes for a very attractive product. But this is a good, what I think of as a TV craft. This is something that you can do once you get your pattern established. This is something you can do while you're doing other things. So, for this pattern, you're going to take your top right blue and you're gonna move it over to that side. And that's gonna the same place. Then you're just moving cords from bottom to top or top to bottom to fill whichever slot is empty. So we're gonna start, we're moving from right to left. So we're gonna take the bottom right and we're gonna move it to that top right. Then the second one over and move it down to the empty slot on the bottom. So you're just always filling in whichever slot is empty, top to bottom, bottom to top, but we're always moving from right to left. Then when we get down to this last one on the bottom left and it's empty, we're going to take our side one and put that in place. 
straighten out the things. I'm gonna hold it now with my right hand. I'm gonna give it just a little tug on the knot. And then I repeat. I'm gonna take the top right, put it in the side, and then again, just go through. I'm gonna fill these in. Top to bottom, bottom to top. Always from right to left. Now, as I go, as these loosen up, if one of my um, tabs gets bent down or if it's not holding on to my cord very tightly, you can always, um, when that slit is empty, you can use your scissors and cut a little bit more, make it a little bit deeper, give it a new kind of a tight bottom to that disc. You can switch discs um, while you're braiding if you need to, if this one just gets too beaten up. Um, you just need to keep track of which strand is which and maintain your tension while you go. So we're going to keep doing this. We're gonna keep doing each row, one to the side, and then just filling in like that, all the way down until my bracelet is the desired length. So the question is, how do you decide the dis how long you want it to be? Obviously it depends on the circumference of your wrist. Let me set this aside for a second. So for me, the braided part is six inches. Now, like I said, that's kind of snug, although I notice that it is loosening up the more I wear it. So, but, so, cause it has just a little bit of give. So I'm probably going to do just a little bit over six inches. Keep in mind that you have the knot at the end and you're gonna have a loop at the end. And those measure, my knot is about a half inch and the loop and everything is just a little bit over an inch. So start to finish this bracelet is, I'm looking at my measurements here, about seven and a half inches. So let's assume about an inch and a half for knot and loop. And then whatever else is the diameter of your wrist is how long you want your braided section. So I'm going to keep going with mine until it is just a hair over six inches and then I will come back and show you how we're finishing this off. Okay, so I kept working and you can tell because my, the tabs on my, um, on my loom are all getting kind of bent and bedraggled. I did have to stop at one point in time and extend my slits a little bit um, just because they were getting too loose to hold on to the cord. So I'm at just just a little bit over six inches here. So I'm going to hold it here nice and tight and I'm gonna just take it off the loom. And of course it pops off <laughs> quite easily because the loom is so, so used. Now there are various ways you can finish this off. You could get clasps, you can knot it off. Because this is rat tail and it is so smooth, I find knots to be very difficult with this because they just don't stay very well. So that's where our little elastic bands are gonna come in. So I'm just gonna take an elastic band and I'm just going to wrap it around right at the base of my braid there. Nice and tight. Then I'm going to take one strand and I'm going to make a loop. So I'm going to bring that one back through there, or back down alongside, I guess. And the loop needs to be big enough to fit the knot through, but not so big that it's going to, the knot's gonna slide through without us wanting it to. So we want the knot to be able to go through with some effort. And then I'm going to continue wrapping my rubber band. So seven of the cords are going off to the top, one is looped and going down to the bottom. 
and I'm going to keep doing that, twisting and wrapping until it's nice and tight and I have no more give left in my rubber band to do that. One more, I think. Okay, then I'm just going to adjust them so that they're all tied up against each other. So I have my loop here. <clears throat> I have the remaining seven knots. And if I tug on that loop, it's it moves, but not very well. So one thing you can do <clears throat> is you can take it and you can take just this one strand and run it around through a loop of the rubber band again. If you can get it, there we go. that tight so it has an extra little loop there and that gives it an extra little friction so now my my loop isn't moving at all then I'm just going to trim all of these off fairly low down so I have my loop with my rubber band at one end I have my knot at the other end I'm going to trim this end as well And there you have it. And then you would just swing that around and it's gonna stay on your wrist. You can, now again, since this is rat tail, that's going to fray over time. So that is where I would either put a dot of glue or if it's not cotton rat tail, which this isn't, you can just run a flame over it a little bit and it gets a little melty and soft. Then it'll harden up and it'll stay and it keeps it from raveling, unraveling, and makes it a little bit more secure. Again, you wanna be careful with that, just quick passes with the flame, and if you're doing this with other cord, test it first on a little piece to make sure that it just melts and doesn't burn. But once you've got that done, you just wrap it around your wrist, slide the knot through the loop, and there you have it. As you can see, I made this one a little bit looser. My other one was a little bit more snug. I just think you could do these in different colors um, and you can stack them, stack them. I made a long one and I made it into the lanyard for my badge. I'm thinking too, you could make this in whatever colors you want because rat tail is available in all different colors and you could dress up like a thrifted denim jacket with braid like this. I'm, I'm on the hunt now for a thrifted denim jacket. I think that would be great. So, so there you go. That's your Kumi Hemo. Now these discs, like I said, they're available at most places where you can buy craft stores, but we will eventually have some available for you to check out here at the library. So check back with us and see if our set of Kumi Hemo discs is ready um, for checkout yet and you can check this out and you can try it. These are obviously going to be more forgiving than our cardboard discs because they're soft and they're flexible. This is just a very, very thick kind of dense foam. And the number of patterns that are available to you is there's so many of them and we have books on them that give you the patterns and give you more tips on doing this. So thank you for joining us for this take home workshop. We ask that you please share your work with us on social media, we would love to see it. And we also want to thank the Bettendorf Public Library Foundation and Quad City Bank and Trust for sponsoring our Creation Studio programming.